Learning small contract security is very important. And in this video, we're going to talk about arithmetic overflow and underflow. We're going to demonstrate a live attack of an arithmetic overflow and underflow. It's also worth knowing that you have to handle this differently in different versions of Solidity. To begin, I will demonstrate this exploit in version 0.7 of Solidity. The point of the small contract is a borrowing app that doesn't require any collateral. Once you join the collective, you can borrow as long as there are funds in the small contract. There are people who just decide to donate the smart contract out of the goodness of their heart. So I'm going to start by donating. I'm only going to donate in we, which is the smallest unit of ether, just for demonstration purposes. By the way, this entire thing is for demonstration purposes. So do not write your code, especially in the way that the victim code is written. So I'm going to donate a 257 we, which is a small amount of ETH. Let me donate a little bit more so I can make sure I have enough for both attacks. So donate more. Okay, cool. So the first attack I'm going to do is I'm going to attack with an overflow. So if I click attack with overflow, boom, we receive 257 way. The way how this attack with overflow works is I am actually joining the collective. I'm borrowing 257 way. And if I'm borrowing 257 way, then surely that should mean that I have a loan to repay, which is 257 way. However, when I check to see how much I have for that particular address, it's going to say I only have to pay one back. Why is that the case? I'll explain a bit later. The second one I'm going to attempt is attack with underflow. So now I have 511 way and let's see how the underflow attack works. I joined the collective, I borrowed one and I repaid two. So I borrowed one way, I repeat, repaid two way, but now I have about double of what I had before. So how is it possible that I was able to receive more money, repay my loan, so if I get my loan amount, it says zero, repay my loan and still have double of the amount that I was supposed to receive. That doesn't make any sense. And that's because this small contract, the victim contract has been exploited by my attacker contract, which has been able to just take all the money from the small contract. So I will explain how this works a bit more deeply. There may be various data types for integers. So for example, in Solidity, there's UNT8 all the way up to UNT256. So you went eight is a data type for unsigned integers at that. that means it can't be negative. And the largest number is two to the power of eight minus one. Two to the power of eight is 256. So if you had a variable that was u and eight, the largest number that can be stored in the variable is 255. So what happens if you add one to 255? We know for sure that we can't represent 256. So what happens is an overflow. Instead of going to 256, which we know can't exist, it goes all the way to the start again, and then the first number will be zero. With underflow, it's a similar thing. If your number is zero and you minus one, for example, there is no negative numbers and unsigned integers. So that means it goes all the way to the end of possible numbers that can be represented by a U and eight, and that number will be 255. So that's an example of an integer overflow and underflow. It's very unexpected. And we're not used to math working in that way. We're just expecting the number to keep amending or decreasing. So it's very important for you to understand how this can cause millions of dollars to be lost from your smart contract. And in this video, we're going to show you exactly how. So first, let me explain the victim. The victim contract has a method called borrow, where if you are a member, and if the address of the balance is more than equal to the amount that you'd like to borrow, then they will increment the loan with the amount that you are trying to borrow. That makes sense. And then they will send you the value. Super standard. So if that's the case, how is the attacker able to receive 257 way from the smart contract? But at the same time, the loan amount wasn't 257 way at the time. It was just one. And the reason is because of an overflow. If you look at the attacker code, it first borrowed 255 way. Therefore, the loan amount will be 255, but then it borrowed two. So what is 255 plus two? That's 257. However, 257 is larger than the largest type that can be supported by a U and eight. So that means an overflow occurred. So it got to 255, then when it got to 256, it went to zero. And then when it got to 257, it went to one. So that is why the loan amount at the end of this attack was actually one. So that is how the attacker was able to borrow a large amount of money in this case, 257 way, and they only had a loan amount of one way to repay. That's ridiculous. And that is an example of arithmetic overflow causing you to lose money in your small contract. So in the arithmetic underflow, they were able to also get a large amount of money, repay their loan completely, and still retain this large amount of money. If we see how the repay function works, basically it just does some checks. For example, 
make sure you do have a loan, make sure the amount that you are sending is more than zero, make sure that the amount you're stating that you want to repay is the same that you sent with the small contract transaction. And then it basically says if the loan amount is less than the amount that you sent in, then clearly you are repaying your loan. And then we're going to send the remainder value back to you because we have no need for it in a small contract. So in this line here, we get the remainder amount and then we send the remainder to you. We also update the loan amount to be zero because it's a subtraction we know for sure this will be an underflow you're moving towards zero and the way that that worked is that they borrowed one so at that point in time the loan amount would be one and then they repaid two so if they repaid two then in this line of the code it would say okay so you have a borrower amount of one you're trying to repay two so that sounds really good so therefore we're going to set the loan amount to zero because you've clearly repaid it and then you're going to say the remainder is loan minus amount now I did this like this on purpose because obviously this was supposedly render a negative number because if you have one minus two, then the answer should be minus one. But because it's an unsigned integer, it is not a negative number. So this is a problem and it does the underflow. Of course, this is probably not how you would write your code. You probably do amount minus loan, but just for demonstration purposes, I would say, okay, instead of negative one, because there's no negative one, it will look back on the other side of the max numbers that can be um, represented by you int, and that'll be 255. And then it would actually send 255 in this line here, in line 23. It then sends 255 back to the person who was trying to repay the loan. So that's unfortunate because they only borrowed one and they were repaying two, but then they received 255 from the smart contract. So that's an example of how an underflow was able to occur. And this, by the way, is in Solidity version 7. Now let's talk about the Survivor Smart Contract. So I am going to deploy the Survivor Smart Contract and then redeploy the attacker because the attacker needs the address of the victim. So in this case, the victim is definitely a survivor. We need to donate some ETH to, let's donate 599, we to the survivor so that we have enough to possibly exploit. And then we're going to call the attacker again. So we're gonna say attack at overflow, that transaction failed, loan value exceeds U and aid limits. And then we're going to do the attack with underflow, and that has also failed a safe math a subtraction flow. So if you look at what we put as a solution in the survivor smart contract is we imported a library from OpenZeffelin called safe math. And by using this lab library, we can say using safe math for U int eight. And therefore, whenever we are actually doing any additional subtractions, we will then be using the safe math functions. So you'll say dot add, that's how we're using safe math as well as sub for any subtractions. Even though I am using safe math, I can get into a situation where I, I'm still able to cause or force an overflow. An example here, I'm saying that U int result is equal to the loan for that particular sender at the amount that they are trying to borrow. But I didn't say U int 8. And the reason why I didn't say U int 8 is because in the case where it is an overflow, I wanted to be able to capture it. So I capture it by using a data type that's actually larger than U int 8, which is U int 256. And then I try casting it. So I cast it back to U int 8. And this line here, an overflow can actually still occur. So the way that I check for it, I say require that the result is actually equal to the result cost. So the integer, that's a 256 data type. I want to make sure when we downcast it to a uint8, it still is the same number. If it's not the same number, that means there was some kind of funky math that happened that resulted in an over or underflow. So in that case, if it did happen, then I would say loan value exceeds U and 8, and that's why you saw the error. The reason why I had to do it this way is because the add function from safe math actually returns a UN256. So UN without saying what kind it is, is UN256. So I had to make sure that if it is returning a UN256, if we were in a position where there was an overflow, so for example, 255 plus 1 would be 256, which would be too large for UN8, but it wouldn't be too large for UN256. So it would have been correct and it would have continued with 256. And then when we did the casting, 256 would then return to zero. So that's why I did this check right here to add some extra safety measures around this code. But hopefully you won't be coding with version seven because this does add some complexity. If you are using Solidity versions before 0.8, you should definitely make use of the safe math library so you can account for any over and underflows because Solidity in those versions did not do any checks for it. And now let's talk about Solidity version eight. Currently the latest version is 0.8.21. Version 0 0.8 of Solidity actually checks for arithmetic over and underflows. So that means that if there is an overflow or underflow, the smart contract would revert as we saw in a similar fashion with version 0.7. So I am just going to demonstrate how I can prove that to you. So I have the victim contract in version 8 and I have to change my compiler here to 0.8. 
0.19 and I had to do this here wherever I did any arithmetic that could re result in an underflow and overflow I added unchecked unchecked is very dangerous and I'm just using this for demonstration purposes but essentially it allows the transactions to complete successfully and it doesn't check for over and underflows I just put this here so that you can see how it can be done if you would like to demonstrate with version 8 but do not put this in your code because I doubt you're going to do any arithmetic that actually does require over and underflows I'm going to deploy the victim contract get the address of that and then I'm going to deploy the attacker contract now I am going to donate to the collective so that people can get loans easily and now I'm going to do the overflow 256 and then now I'm going to do the underflow attack okay so we see that works we were able to drain majority of the funds from the smart contract and the next step we're going to do is actually the survivor contract for this so now I'm going to deploy the survivor and now I've deployed a the survivor then I can deploy the attacker I have to deploy with the address of the survival, which is this one. Alrighty, so now I'm going to donate to the survival. Now I'm going to attack with overflow. That did not work. Then I'm going to attack with an underflow. That also did not work. So let's walk through the code and see why. So looking at the survivor smart contract, we are not using safe math. I am using the re-entrancy guard. And if you don't know anything about re-entrancy, then check out my first video within this series where I explain that. And what I did essentially, I removed the unchecked because we know we shouldn't be using unchecked within our smart contracts because that is only if you would like the compiler to ignore any over and under flows. I am using version 0.8.19 of Solidity and that's it actually that is the only thing I'm doing and it just reverse automatically even though the code compiles it reverse because it hit an edge case where there was an over and underflow I want you to look at the re-entrancy attack video which has a similar format to this and as you start thinking like a defensive programmer I promise you your coding will improve because you're writing more secure contracts it doesn't stop here you have to make sure you get your code audited etc but I hope this helps and don't forget to check out the re-entrancy attack video see you in that video bye